Hi guys, uh, time has gotten short and I need to get on the road to Chelan to come visit you. So on this video, instead of giving you a well thought out, carefully scripted description of what's going on, you are instead going to get me talking by the seat of my pants. So here we go. You saw me using a, a thinned out little puddle of paint, so it was a dab of paint and a little bit of Gamsol and thinned out to almost like a watercolor consistency and that's what I use to draw with when I do a painting. So in case you're wondering, I don't paint this fast, I actually speeded up the video. And hopefully you're noticing when I draw these clouds that I'm using lots of straightish lines instead of curved lines. Uh, when we use curved lines, we tend to oversimplify things and they start to look cartoonish very quickly. So one way to get around that is to draw curved items like clouds with straight lines. Who knew? Okay, now I'm going to start mixing the uh, couple piles of paint. And I just showed you there that I didn't have a ton, how much paint I had on the bottom of my palette knife. So this looks like the puddle that I'll be using for the lower portion of the sky where the blue is warmish, almost green. So a little bit of this cadmium yellow light really helps to make that color. Okay, now I'm mixing the second puddle of paint and this will be the color that I will uh, paint towards the top of the sky. So I'll probably talk about this in class, how the uh, sky change, changes its in value and it goes from the horizon, it is kind of pale, kind of a pale, warm, almost greenish blue and then as you look up the sky towards the zenith, it gets darker. A little bit of Gamsol to make the paint thinner there. Okay, now I've added the photo that I'm painting from. This is a photo that I took on a visit to visit, a visit to visit, <laughs> a visit to see my sister in England. had really good weather on that visit, which isn't always the case when you visit England. So I'm painting in between my cloud shapes. Adding some Gamsol, thin it out there a bit. Okay, I'm starting out that darker color that you get as you look towards the zenith of the sky. And you can kind of see that in the photo too. You can see that value change from the horizon up to the top of the photo. This is kind of an easy way to get that in-between color is just to mix the two piles together a little bit. Okay, I've gotten the sky color blocked in pretty much, and now I'm just kind of smoothing out the gradation a bit. Oh, now we are cleaning off the palette and getting ready to mix colors for the clouds. Now, I have to admit, I made a boo-boo here. was not checking the battery level on the iPad that was recording 
me painting the clouds. So, as you will see, that video is not here. The clouds have already been painted. But don't worry, I have a separate video just for painting clouds. So right now, I am. this is the color that I just painted on there, was the color towards the top of the painting. And the little, the second dot that I put on, that was the color I painted at the bottom of the sky. And I just wanted to show you the value difference between those two colors. Now I did manage to realize that, um, get my, I guess get my iPad recharged so that I could record uh, a little bit of the painting of the clouds. And these are actually kind of the finishing touches where I'm softening edges, trying to make the edges a little irregular. You know, I paint into the clouds a little bit or pull them out to make them more irregular. And I also paint what I'll talk to you about. I call them little UFOs. They're the little teeny clouds that you often see hanging out next to the big clouds. So a lot of this is just working back and forth, lightening things or darkening them until I feel like they are where I want them to be. Here's a little UFO. They're always darker than the cloud that it's next to, unless it's you know next to the shadow part portion of the cloud, because you know, water vapor is transparent, so you're seeing a lot of the sky through it. painting with a smaller brush. It looks like it might be a filbert. Filberts are kind of handy in this uh, painting this type of thing because they have a rounded tip so it looks a little more natural. The brush stroke does. Voila!